Welcome to the Poisoner's Cabinet. I'm Sinead. And I'm Nick. And this is your weekly podcast exploring the lives of the great poisoners, macabre murders and captivating crimes from across the centuries and creating curious cocktails inspired by the tales that we tell. And it's episode 168. Roo, 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 and hurrah, and It was a bit like a sort of a Lord's mumble, wasn't it? Yes, there we are. 168, so close to 170. It is. What happens then? Things, things happen. Go good. As long as you've got something planned. Yeah, I have something planned. Pro- Excellent. Pr- pr- probably. I'm glad yeah. to hear it. Let's just say yes. Is it that cake? Okay. Someone put it on Instagram. What? Someone tagged us in a cake on Instagram. Oh, I've not seen it. It was a cake made of Strega. Well, with Strega. Made of Strega. Not, would be not just, entirely... That would just be a bottle and they go, yeah. look, it's cake. Not, not entirely Strega. Ooh, okay. And well, it's like, saffron that cake. That looked exciting. That does look exciting. Maybe we should make a big old poisonous cabinet cake. Yeah. Draw to Strega. A lemon. Oh, lemon and Strager. Bewitched mm. lemon cake. Bewitched lemon cake. Oh, my God. Very exciting. Oh, we and should I, whip that up. I have asked for the recipe. Better still, send me cake. <laughs> I don't think it, cake will travel well. Does it not? <laughs> Famously, we're not supposed to accept food stuff through the post. If that's, this that's fair. podcast has taught us anything, that's wise. Yes, that okay. will lead to problems. Just the recipe, then, please. No, just the recipe. You can have a cake. Oh, bake off. Bake off. I will not be baking, but my husband will. <laughs> he's off on holiday, so he's just like, now I'm baking bread. Bake cakes. <laughs> bake cakes. How are you, Nick? Or oh, cake. You want cake? Like cake. You do I'm not like cake a bit for of ages. Cake. Do you think you'll bake some cake, or do you just want it brought to your face? I'm quite looking forward to it in my new larger kitchen. Mm. Maybe actually doing some baking. Mm. Where stuff is actually in the room. I don't, have to, <laughs> I don't have to like go to boxes in the shed to get a cake tin. Yes. As you frequently said before, you're very lazy. Oh, incredibly so. But if it's all laid out... If it's there... I've got a big mixer. Like, exactly. I've got a mixer. Yay. Got all this stuff, but it was never to hand. Oh, it's a very big kitchen you've got now. So, yeah. It's very fancy. It's not that big. It was bigger than what you had. Bigger than what I had. I mean, you bigger had a shoebox. <laughs> it was <laughs> sad every this, time this, we went this, in. This is shoebox and cake tin sized. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's got an area for cake and booze. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. Making, I'll make some cake. Oh, nice. Any poisonings this week? Not the cake. Not that's the cake. The, that's not the cake. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do this to me tonight. <laughs> cake or death, literally. No, there's no poison cake, probably. Good. Oh, just think about cake. Think about cake. Ahead. Happy place. Think about I cake. Don't think there's any poisonings this week. I think someone poisoned the internet because at work I was like, "Oh, look, Instagram has disappeared for several people." I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> if anyone knows how to fix that, message me. Anyone work for Meta? Then get in touch. <laughs> could you? Could you? If you are listening to this podcast while working at Meta, could you answer the goddamn phone? <laughs> not that you have phones. I mean, it's like, like there's a helpline or anything. No, 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 no. Well, speaking of cake. And having baking competitions in your giant kitchens, I think it is time for us to thank our delicious Patreon subscribers. Oh, we definitely, 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 definitely should. Mm-hmm. So thank you very much to Donna Young. To Amanda Campbell. To Emily Pritchard. To Lizzie Schumann. To Roseanne Turner. To Vivian Fu. Jill Torgensen. To Nell the Era Witch. That of cake fame. That of cake fame. And to Bunny Bouncer. Bunny Bouncer. <laughs> thank you very much for joining That's us. That's either a hobby... Or a profession. It could be both. It could be both. You Some b- people are lucky that way. Yeah, you could bounce a bunny on your knee or stop them from coming into the warren. <laughs> so only hairs allowed, that's it. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. What people have to wear a living, Nick? This is, I can't argue with that. No, you can't. And you shan't. I won't allow it. <laughs> I wouldn't dare. I have my own bounces for my own arguments. Well, Nick, are you ready? Yes. To drink cocktails and talk about poison? Okay. Or... We could drink poison talking about cocktails. Ah, I've got a cocktail on the go already. Oh, oh you've got fine. a pre-cocktail cocktail, mm-hmm. you see. Oh, interesting. Well, would you like some more? Always. Well, maybe we should go with the first one. Okay. Hooray, hooray, hooray. It is Nick's story this week, but we can't, we can't, we can't possibly have a story without more cocktails in hand. <laughs> As not. you know, dear listeners, every week we choose a secret ingredient that is inspired by the tale that we tell, and it will flavor our cocktail of the week. Nick's story, so his pick, and this week's secret ingredient is... Guns. G- many guns. Or is it a singular gun? A gun. A singular gun. A gun. A gun. Oh, how have we not had guns? I know. Or a gun? We've had a shotgun. And we've had a bullet. And we've had bullets. But we've not put them together. Not, no, indeed. Not a gun. Because it was that or avocados. Yes, you did say avocados. And I was really concerned about avocados until I thought, oh, we haven't done guns. I was trying to, <laughs> how can I get an avocado? In well, this? I mean, avocado is quite good. Not for drinks, it's not. Well, there's go, some... Here, here is a margarita with some guacamole on the side. 
uh, that, that would work that, actually uh, why that, didn't we have that, that did cross my mind <laughs> I thought I could make a green drink <laughs> I'll make something green and serve some looks guacamole looks like an avocado <laughs> and then some guac on the side I'd, I'd some... have that I'd be eating it with my hands yeah, no you would shout at me I wouldn't shout if you put guacamole in front of me. <laughs> All would be forgiven. But, but I didn't do that. But I would have blended some avocado into something. But a gun, great. But so I'd you just gone for a gun instead. Great, you're gonna shoot me in the face. Yes, that's the way forward. <laughs> With a gun of booze, you've got it set on lush. Well, I I hope that whatever's in the poisonous cabinet kitchen is drinkable. Okay, with gun as your inspiration, what have you come up with? We're having this week. Okay, we're gonna have a revolver. A revolver. We have a revolver. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yes. It's a steady kind of gun. It's a good old gun. It's a good old fashioned Absolutely. gun. Absolutely. Lovely. Also, a very good Beatles album. Okay. You know that album. Uh, yes, absolutely. Do you, how can you not know Revolver? I probably do. You, pr- you probably. Oh, you were not allowed to listen to Beatles <laughs> albums as a child. No. Yeah. Only thrash metal. <laughs> pretty much. Pretty much. That's how it was. <laughs> Wonderful. I think it is high time for us to blast our way into the poisonous cabinet kitchen and shake up a storm. So we'll see you in a minute. We'll see you in a bit. And we're back. Yalla. So, Nick, a revolver. A revolver. Deadly. Beautiful. Elegant. Yes, all those things. Gunny. 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 Sparky, shooty death. <laughs> that's, that's the extent of my knowledge of how guns work. Well done, well done. Do you know how guns work? Is this a conversation we should pursue? <laughs> <laughs> no, let's not. <laughs> no, okay, good, good. Magic, that's how Magic, guns that's work. work. There's a small Lovely. fairy that lives inside. An angry one, I, I sense. Hate everyone. <laughs> Just rage constantly. But okay, it's it's a brown drink. It's brown. Did yes. you chill the glasses? I did. <laughs> chill the glasses. Oh, lovely. Okay, it looks nice. So I think we should dive in. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Oh, hello, hello. Hello, alcohol. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> mm. Okay, I'm drunk. <laughs> oh, that is, that is. It's brown. I think that's actually quite accurate <laughs> for all the brown drinks. You know what they have in common? <laughs> this shit. It's, I don't know if I, ooh, it's not unlikable, but it's very strong. It's very strong. It's very strong. <laughs> and it's your episode. It doesn't mellow much on the second sip, but it's interesting. <laughs> really strong. Oh, I now have to guess. It's bourbon? Yes. Bourbon, okay. Because brown. Because brown. Good brown. Good. Bourbon started brown. well. Bourbon, bourbon brown. Bourbon, bourbon, bourbon brown. good. Bourbon good. <laughs> Gin bad. <laughs> that, he's going to take away my ability to form sentences, and they were tenuous at best today. It, okay. So, oh, one that I think I know what's in here, because you told me. <laughs> is there some coffee in here? There is some coffee in there. Mm-hmm. I don't... I can taste a little bit of it. I think the, the coffee... That we have in the cupboard is not the best coffee. It's not like the really so good coffee liqueur. It, yeah, so I think that's potentially where it's letting down slightly. Yeah, it's not the best. But I do taste it. Oh, you see, yeah, you can taste it. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But okay. I think. But there's other things in here. One other thing. One other thing. Yeah. Oh, um, another spirit. Nope. Oh, a garnish. I guess. There's a whole tree in there. <laughs> bitters? There's some orange bitters. Oh, orange bitters. Orange oh, bitters. okay. Orange okay. bitters in there. This is, this is just bourbon and coffee. Bourbon and coffee and some bitters. <laughs> it is a revolver. <laughs> it strikes you straight between it's, the eyes. It's deadly. Deadly, deadly, it deadly. It is deadly. Ooh. Well, what do you think of I that? I quite like it. I think, I think it is not helped by the coffee liqueur that we have. It needs a better quality coffee. I can taste it. I'm not it. amazed by it. I think, with a, I think, yeah. I think with a better coffee, it will be a lot better. Do you think you should add more coffee liqueur to it? Don't think so. I think it just needs a stronger, a, just, just a, yeah. a stronger one. Because I think the, the one that we have is very chemically. It's synthetic. Oh. <laughs> it's quite sugary yeah. rather than you had a really dark. Like, yeah, so you can get like the Mr. One. Black sort of dark, dark, really dark bitter one. I think that would work really nicely. Ooh, no. That needs to be improved upon. Yes. Because yeah, it is very well reviewed and there are lots of comments and things. people go, oh, this is fantastic, lovely, lovely, lovely. Mm. So a bit disappointing, but I think it's the ingredients rather than the cocktail. Ah, Okay. But it's still, personally. it's still nice. I'm going to drink it. I'm yeah, not we're going to gonna drink, drink it. it. It's it's just a big old glass of bourbon. <laughs> big old spirit forward. Sp- spirit, uh, forward spirit forward is, forward, is one way. Bullet forward. Spirit <laughs> forward with a bullet, I think. But stirred over ice to dilute it a bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so there we go. Aptly named. Well, with our revolvers firmly yeah. in hand, revolver placed to our back, marching down the road to Storyville... <laughs> Is it time for a story, it Nick? It certainly is. Great. 
Hurrah. I, I'm going to enjoy this. There may be much ad-libbing through this. Oh, good. It won't make sense. That's something to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> so, today, we have the tale... Okay. ...of Louise Pitti. Louise Pitti? Louise Pitti. Ooh, was she a woman who dealt in turf? Yes, exactly what she was. <laughs> no, she wasn't. Um, but she, I am surprised we've not covered her before. Okay. Because when I started reading into it, I thought, how have we not covered you before? Oh, <laughs> okay. Marvellous. Um, yeah, a woman who was found guilty of two murders Ooh. and undoubtedly responsible for many, many others. <gasps> so Louise was born Lottie Louise Preslar. In, I don't want to say Presla. How many A's were there? Presla. <laughs> many, many, many A's. Mrs. Presla, hello. In Bienville, Louisiana, in 1880. Oh, nice, nice. Yes, absolutely. Also, oh, she was eight when she was Jack the Ripper. Yes, right. that's how that works. <laughs> it's how we measure everything. <laughs> now, her father was a very uh, prominent and wealthy newspaper publisher, so she had a very privileged upbringing. Ooh. She attended the very best private schools in New Orleans. She would later say that she had come from cultured, educated people. My parents were not delinquents and did not rear delinquent children. Oh, okay. Absolutely not. Well, she sounds like a delight. Yeah, and also it was complete bollocks because, however, oh. contrary to her, her sort of claims of this sort of classy upbringing, as she got older, she does develop into a complete wild child. So that <laughs> level of sort of privilege, she actually just goes in completely insane. As I say, she attends the best schools, but she is expelled from them on one occasion for stealing from her classmates. <sighs> Don't, she's don't rob your she's excelled, and then she ends up at a very posh finishing school to make <laughs> you into a decent young lady, <laughs> and she's expelled from there for engaging in promiscuous behaviour. Oh dear! Yes. With who? Well, well, she's sneaking in boys from the neighbourhood oh, and she? Oh. all this sort of thing, <gasps> cavorting with the gardener. Exactly. Yeah, sneaking out of the, the greenhouses of the midnight <laughs> <laughs> into the greenhouses. Absolutely. Famously, where the glass. gardeners live. Yeah, but famously, glass. Everyone will see you. Go That's to his midnight. shed. <laughs> all the candles lit he's made it romantic for there we her go. but yeah scandalous <laughs> scandalous behavior Dreadful. so after her various expulsions she actually ends up returning to bienville and there her parents go oh louise oh. <laughs> <laughs> and she settles into a life of parties and leisure and courting eligible young bachelors oh so they do nothing oh pretty much no did she ride the gardener home <laughs> <laughs> i think she probably got like a ticking off for, oh you've been expelled again from another fancy score that this we've had to pay hundreds do. of dollars for. So, okay, fine, come home then. Your punishment is you will be confined to your room for six minutes. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes, we've halved your dress budget. <laughs> <laughs> so, and she continues. She's going to have a grand old time no matter what the hell anyone else says. Mm -hmm. In 1903, mm -hmm. she marries Henry Bosley. Bosley. Now, Henry, he is a travelling salesman. Not mm. quite the sort of match that her parents were, were looking for. This sort of wealthy newspaper publisher. It was not really what he had in mind for his daughter. But apparently no. they're in love. Mm. They're absolutely in love. Now, Henry is completely infatuated. He is gobsmacked that he has managed to land such a beautiful, glamorous mm. wife. Yeah. So much better than his station. Yeah. Than what he, anything he could have dreamed of. He is over the moon. <laughs> that is until the summer of 1906. So they've been married for three years. Oh, nice. Well done. Louise has left her home in Broomville and she's gone off on the road with her husband. Well, so travel, that's what I thought would be something attractive Something exotic. To her. It gets her away from home. No, mm. no, she's got an allowance from daddy still, so they're Obviously. not exactly slumming it. Yeah. Do we know what he sold? We don't, unfortunately, no. Oh, okay. No. Revolvers. Maybe. Revolvers. Potentially <laughs> yeah. revolvers. And kitchen knives. <laughs> <laughs> but he's out there selling it. He's flogging his guts out. Trying to make a good, exciting wife. Life of his wife. <laughs> Trying to make, make a wife for his life? An exciting wife. I'm going to make you excited wife with all my selling. She's in the back seat like, oh yes, I'll sell those magazines. Yeah, whatever it is, he doesn't sell enough. Oh shit. Because one day he returns to find his darling wife in bed with another man. Oh, oh. Henry no, no, no. is, he is devastated. He is utterly bereft by this how could she do this oh, yeah he kills himself two days later oh come on nick no i wasn't emotionally ready for no, that i'm gonna twist and turns all over the place oh da, oh oh he, Bloody, yeah. you need to trigger warning that <laughs> that's just yeah. desperately sad desperately sad he shoots himself with a revolver with a with a gun with it with a gun what, what particular type of gun i do not know okay but with a variety of gun with a variety of gun <laughs> Possibly one he was trying to sell. I don't know. Oh, God. Okay. I think I must be emotional today because I really want to cry for his lost soul. I'm like, no! 
<laughs> he was a good man, probably. Louise seems entirely nonplussed by the whole thing. <laughs> Within a week, she has sold all of Henry's belongings, <gasps> what little there are in the car, and she's got her eye on Boston. That's where the fancy things are. I she's, mean, yeah. It's gonna be. It's gonna be lovely. Now, I however, the, the money Boston. that she's able to get from Henry's death is not quite enough to get her all the way there. So she's not earned a huge amount of money. Apparently there was no life insurance or anything like mm. that. Just the selling of the few meagre belongings he had wasn't enough. So she needs some, she needs ways to make some money fast. She was able to afford to move to Shreveport, which is in Louisiana. And she starts up work as an escort. Oh, well, oh, oh, oh. She oh. starts up work as an escort. But she is not sort of your common on the corner touting for business the sort of escort. She's going for the high class. She's right. going for the gentry. Okay. She's going for the, the fashionable, the rich people. And is she being like a paid date or is she willing to, you know... Oh, yeah. Uh, or she'll, she'll go all the way. She'll go all the Abs- way. She'll go right. all the way, absolutely. But she's the highest of the but class. The, yeah, absolutely. But yes. yeah, she's not someone you, you know, rock up on a street corner. Was to... she like that hand gesture? Because <laughs> you you're that? winding down your window. <laughs> no, I, you did that. I did was I? like, what was, she, what was she rocking up on? <laughs> Someone's pushing with a broom, like, getting out there. <laughs> Um, yeah. your no, but she she's got her eyes firmly set on the highest of society. Well, yes, you know the days of the courtesan and everything. Exactly, she's going to become someone's mistress, and she's going to earn a decent wage out of it. Mm. And she quickly becomes a favourite of the local gentry, who pay handsomely. Oh. Absolutely, they pay handsomely. She also helps herself to her clients' wives' jewellery. While, while she's there. Oh, 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 Louise. Oh. <laughs> so oh. She, she's in the bedroom. She's going, oh, yes, I'll have one that, and I'll have that. And those earrings are quite nice. <laughs> <laughs> she's shopping. Shopping. She, pretty much. She's shopping. My husband's so she, sitting at the end of the bed. Please don't take that. So she keeps My wife the bits. would be annoyed, really. Do you want me to talk to her? Mm. No, okay, never mind. She keeps the bits like she shells. What well, she, she doesn't. She, she shells. She shells, shells on the seashore. On the seashore. <laughs> on the seashore. <laughs> well, I mean, she's... Balls of brass Absolutely. Or breasts of brass. She has no scruples. She does what she needs to do to get what she wants. Ooh. So, yeah, and she does. She amasses this amount of money. She can now get north. She can get to Boston. Why Boston? I don't know. We don't know what's in Boston. Well, so, well, I mean, it's, it's a lovely it's place. A lovely, it's it's a, a lovely, 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 place. lovely place. We must go uh, there someday. Yeah. By 1911, she makes it to Boston. Nice. She arrives there thinking, I'm going to start a new life. This is going to be a whole new thing for me. I'm going to be someone new. It's going to be exciting. She claims to be R.H. Rosley. Now, she is a 19-year-old heiress from Dallas. God, she's only 19. Oh, well, no, she, she, she claims oh, sorry. to be 19. So, she? so, oh, she's, what, 40 now? So. <laughs> so by now, she is 31. <laughs> she may as well be 40. Um, oh, my God. She, yeah, she's 30, 31. 31. She claims to be 19. I... But her education and deportment and things make this perfectly plausible that she was someone of that status mm. from Dallas she comes up with a very dramatic sob story oh. when she arrives her, her family had confined her to a convent a, a con- convent <laughs> <laughs> Convent. 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 That's my, worse than a my, convent. My pronunciation has gone all <laughs> over the place today. It's like you're your man from a lower low, aren't you? <laughs> and and refined lady is a convent. <laughs> her I, family I, had to confine her to a nunnery. <laughs> I was going to say, don't say it again because I'll die. <laughs> her family had confined her to a convent for daring to fall in love with one of the yo- local young men. Oh dear. Someone who they thought was not good enough for their daughter. Oh, but she but was they in were love. in love. They oh. were in love. They wanted to run away together, but they were caught. And she was sent to a nunnery. Mm. So no one, no man could lay his hands on her. Ooh. But she had escaped. She had got away. She had made it all the way to Boston, where she was going to meet up with her fella. And they were going to live happily ever after. And it was all going to be utterly delightful. While she's waiting for her love to arrive, she ingratiates herself into several uh, wealthy Boston families. Mm. She's got the beauty and the charm to convince one family to take her in while she waits for her chap to arrive. Mm -hmm. As soon as she is settled in, Louise goes on a shopping spree. She calls into some of Boston's most expensive stores. Everything is charged back to the family's account. Oh, that is good. She spends... All their money. She pays calls on her various new friends. She, she's been introduced around town. Mm. This is dear old Miss Rosley from Dallas. She's marvellous. You must come <laughs> and say hello. And often people would notice small things that may have gone missing after she paid a visit. Yes. So we're sure we had some nice little, 
little things. There were things <laughs> little, on that there table. Were little th- trinkets, trinkets. Little trinkety things. You know the little tiny trinkets yes, that we had but here? We, they're not there. Where no, have they gone? No, they're not there. And that grandfather clock. I'm sure we had one. <laughs> <laughs> and grandfather. He was there too. <laughs> <laughs> He'll fetch a pretty penny. <laughs> But what, what year is this now? We're in. So we're looking 1911. These people will still have servants and the maids and things around the house. Yes, you still um, have servants, but you're still in the era of just tiny shit, shit all over everywhere. small Absolutely. tables. Absolutely, shit everywhere. Yes, little little pictures of children yeah. playing and everything. And then you wouldn't paint them because all oh, it's been taken for cleaning or something yes. like that, or it's been moved a collection for of thimbles. Yeah, exactly. The so. jewels that we just had out. <laughs> <laughs> Our display of priceless jewels. They've gone. <laughs> So everyone come in and say, oh, yes, feel the weight. We're very wealthy. <laughs> Pretty much. As the weeks go on, people start to question about where where is this mystery man? Her fiancé who's going to come and take okay. her away. When is he actually going to show up here? The family who she's been staying with tries to make contact with Louise's fake family back in Dallas. They're thinking, well, news must have reached them that she's escaped the convent by now. And they must be beside themselves with worry about where has their daughter ended up. Hmm. No one has ever heard of the, this prominent Rosley family. Mm. This, this van does not exist. Now, after some digging, Louise's true identity is discovered, mm-hmm. and people are mortified that they have been <laughs> taken in by such a fraud, <laughs> such a ruse. Many people want Louise locked up um, yes, for this, well, for, for fraud, and for just taking the piss out of people and taking them for a ride. Yeah, because they can't prove that she's stolen anything, but exactly. also she's humiliated them. She's humiliated. Yeah, so the families are there indeed. They're humiliated that they have been duped. Ooh. They don't want this embarrassment. They don't want it splashed over the press no. that they've been taken in. It makes them look like complete suckers <laughs> and open for anyone else with a sob story to come and take an advantage. Well, yeah. She didn't carry on the sob story well enough, though. Because surely, just, just say that her beau died tragically and, oh, God, I'm in mourning. And paint her parents as evil people. Mm. Don't contact them and everything. Eh, rookie mistake. Rookie so, mistake. Yeah. Eventually, it's agreed that Louise just go away. <laughs> they the, these sort of wealthy, prominent families. They sort of collude with the police. So they just just go away. We were not going to press charges. Just get out of Boston and don't come back. Mm. And she goes, all right, okay, <laughs> so, all right. She's got now suitcases still full of frocks <laughs> um, and everyone's valuables. <laughs> <laughs> so she's like, yeah, fine, I'm off. Her. Yes, she can go away with I Now to get, deal with that jewel thief who's been Ooh. working through the neighbourhood. Thank God we don't have to focus on her anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like we all got together and our conclusion was... <laughs> yeah, go away, go away, sure. go away, go away. It very similar to what the, your Patreon this week. Well, yeah, I was thinking Shades of Princess Caribou, <laughs> absolutely, uh, which we dealt with on Patreon this week. Where, but when the subterfuge and the and the deception was uncovered, everyone was like, "Oh, you got us," <laughs> oh. and they were very nice to her, and they said, "Well, yeah. but also maybe leave the country." Yeah. <laughs> so this this is why an embarrassment of the, yes. the wealthy families. But Louise, she's now got some cash tucked away, and she's quite happy. To, to depart Boston. And she makes her way back down south, this time to Waco in Texas. Oh, nice. Now, in Waco, Louise sets to work wooing Joe Apple. Now, Joe is a... He is a notorious oilman. I thought you were going to say he was an apple thief. <laughs> yes, just, absolutely. He's, he worked his way up. <laughs> he's going to say, what other resources can I plunder? <laughs> he, is a, he is a terrifying scrumpy man. <laughs> no, he has hit it big in the oil industry. It's a he place is, to do it in he, Texas. Well, exactly. He has made his fortune. Mm. He is well known around town for his excess. His rings, his belt buttons, his clothing buttons are all encrusted with diamonds. Oh my God, that's things. so he, bougie. I love absolutely. It. I mean, he is going, everyone is going to know that I am fucking rich. <laughs> <laughs> he's he weighed no down expense. somewhat you know he's <laughs> so, put all this stuff on and he's like diamonds and jewels are my gold and he's dragging himself <laughs> around the street like oh, this shit is heavy is it, well, yeah. no, he's, he's got people to carry his legs for him and stuff so he <laughs> but pays... they're also encrusted in jewels <laughs> his servants are painted gold <laughs> so, yeah. I have done very well for myself <laughs> also if he's in Waco in Texas there's probably large stretches of land where there's not a lot of people around when he's dealing with his oil fields that's why he has to be so shiny so they can <laughs> see him from far away he can be seen from space <laughs> so, everyone around town knows joe and he's he's got a, he's got a reputation with the ladies and with the, with, with the diamonds as well <laughs> everyone knows joe probably begrudgingly yeah we all know joe yeah, we all know joe yeah we all know how very wealthy he is the ladies are like it the, the sex was very uncomfortable yes <laughs> it was just well, diamond mattresses diamond sheets it's very 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 spiky <laughs> Do you want a condom? No, God, no, no. I will take the risk. One week after Joe first meets Louise, mm-hmm. 
He's dead. He is found Whoa. with a bullet in his skull. Oh, his diamonds gone, <laughs> missing. Jesus. Okay, that now, took a very rapid turn. Absolutely, he does not take her long. Within a week, she's got his diamonds. Now, people people know they they have been seen around town together. That people know that <gasps> Louise is out. Joe's latest woman, and she is the first one the police question and go. Of course, what's happened to Joe? What did you do to Joe? Where's mm-hmm. Joe? We love Joe. <laughs> <laughs> where's, where's the diamonds? Where's, where's Joe's were diamonds? Made. <laughs> Louise says, yeah, I shot him. What? Yeah, it was me. Self-defense, she says. <gasps> Self-defense. She testifies that he had attempt to rape her. He had attempt to assault her. And that she had only acted to protect herself. Okay. From this renowned Lothario. This man who everyone knows around town. He's got his eye on all the women. He doesn't care if they're married, they're single, it doesn't matter. If he wants something, he goes and gets it. Well, someone that uh, ostentatious, some, yeah. Yep, I don't uh, think that they're very morally he, Well, driven. indeed, he's got quite the reputation and Ooh. Louise uses this to her advantage. Ooh. Everyone gets so caught up in Joe's questionable behaviour, all his past activities. Everyone forgets about the diamonds. The diamonds are completely out of mind now. All these oh. missing diamonds. Everyone's going about Joe. Oh, God, no, he was. He, he was really lecher and he did yeah. this and he did that. And he did well, this. if you go on that side, you're going to think... Oh well, what's a few diamonds? <laughs> no, yeah, he had a lot. He had a lot, but no one knows where they are. No one really, no one really thinks about no where one they've, they've it. gone. Oh my God, clever, clever girl! The jury openly applaud as Louise is released without charge. The jury, the jury, she stands, twelve good men and true. She impartial. stands trial for his murder, self defence, and she is acquitted. Yes, you shot him. You had every right to shoot him. They stand and applaud. While she is jingling away with diamonds in her pockets. <laughs> <laughs> now, look, we can't possibly know, I guess, like, maybe he did. Maybe he did assault her. Maybe he did attempt to assault her. And she was like, you messed with the wrong bitch. Yeah. And then diamonds for me. That's why. But what a number she must have done in the court. Because I don't oh, think we've absolutely. ever had a jury stand up applauding. Mm. They're all clapping. They're all clapping. They're, they're up there clapping. Well done. You did society a favour. You did the great thing. <laughs> you did this. Well done for being strong enough to, to stand up against this bastard. Oh um, <laughs> she walks out of there scot-free, big smile on her face, say, wheelbarrow of diamonds. I will say the cocktail grows on you. Excellent. <laughs> I, I, I finished it. So. <laughs> you, yeah, you have finished it. I thought I was going to really struggle with it. Going, oh, you know, the coffee really sweetens that up. Yeah. By 1913. <laughs> not, I finished it. I can't speak anymore. I'm not taking. I'm not no, it's I'm not taking. The, the, I'm, I'm not taking the piss. I'm really not. But I just find everything is, funny at the bitch. moment. I'm not. <laughs> By 1913, Louise is once again finding herself running a bit low on cash. I mean, what the hell she's doing she with all this money? Diamonds. Yeah, she's stolen a pretty penny, and but yeah, she's getting through it. She's running low on cash. Oh, I wonder if some of his diamonds were fake. Sort of guy wants to flash stuff. <laughs> By now, she is back in Dallas, and this time she has her sights set on. The unsuspecting Harry Farouk. Now, Harry, he seems an easy mark, really. Mm-hmm. He is a night clerk at the St. George's Hotel. Again, okay. no one particularly fancy. This, he's certainly not a millionaire. He's not an oil baron. He's just an average man working at a hotel. And much like her first husband, Henry, he is delighted that someone as glamorous and as, as Louise is, is interested. Yeah. How would you yeah. be interested in little old me? I'm boring old hell too clerk. What's that game? But yeah, she goes for it. Shortly after the two are married, Louise steals $20,000 worth of jewels from the hotel's safe. Of course. Yeah. Why did I ask why she was interested in <laughs> the nightclub? You work at a nice hotel, do a you? A nice hotel in charge of the big <laughs> the safe. rich people stay in. Yeah. Police question Harry about the theft, but they clear him in any involvement. is is obviously not him, but not before his name is dragged through the press as this suspected thief. The hotel, they have no choice. They let him go. They can't have a suspected thief working in the hotel. He loses his job. And if that, is that not enough? He discovers his dear devoted wife in bed with another man. Louise cracking on with some other t- with another guy. <laughs> <laughs> cracking on cracking on you used a lovely phrase there she's having you? she's having a grand crack, old crack on love crack yeah. on her husband's in police custody suspected of thieving twenty thousand dollars worth of jewels they got married did they uh, oh yeah they were married oh they were married okay. yeah yeah oh. she's shagging another guy 
She's not subtle at all, Ooh, no, no, is no. she? No, she's and just, but she, I guess she just doesn't care. Doesn't care. Doesn't care. What are you no. going to do? I'm better than you. What are you going to do? Exactly. He discovers his wife like this, and again, is utterly, utterly devastated. Right. Three days later, no. Harry Froat's body is discovered in the hotel basement what? with a bullet in his skull. In the basement? Police declare it a suicide. It's... No, I'm not happy with this. No, the stress of the Sorry. the stress of the accusations, his wife's apparently continuous infidelities, had all been enough to drive the poor man to take his own life. It's the only explanation. Louise is in no hurry to dissuade them from this theory. And she's going, oh, yeah, absolutely, it must have been, it must have been. He killed himself. No, oh, poor husband. Oh, for God's sake. She oh, claims no, no, no. a modest life insurance policy that she had conveniently taken out on her <gasps> her, her husband, and disappears. With a stash of hotel jewels. With jewels. With all the jewels from Saying, Oh, the it's so safe. sad. Oh, so, it's so sad. It's so I, just like this, I can't I just possibly stay up. here anymore. The memories are so painful. I know, it's very sad. <laughs> it's like, you're wearing a lot of jewellery right now. Yeah. I'm sad. When you feel sad, you try everything to make yourself feel better. <laughs> in 1915, Louise pops up in Denver, Colorado, mm. where she marries salesman Richard Peaty. The couple have a daughter together, Frances Anne, in 1916. Oh, now, R- Richard is a door-to-door salesman, very similar to her first husband, mm. but his modest income does not meet her expectations at all. None of this. Well, None got... of the men she marries are particularly, yeah. yeah, have any sort of huge incomes coming to them. But Why? they're the chaps she goes with. There's always an angle that she's working. But then surely, like, what would be wrong with being a girlfriend or just... She doesn't have to marry them in that day and oh, age. No. Unless that gives her more of an alibi of the dutiful wife. Oh, yeah. know, she marries them. So, I mean, the couple, they, they constantly fight. Eventually, <laughs> they, they do actually separate yeah. in the summer of 1920. So, yep, yeah, so five years later, they, they separate. But they remain legally married throughout. So Louise leaves her estranged husband and daughter and moves to L.A. Oh, um, dumps the kid. The kid is left with the, the, the husband um, and she's off to L.A. And there she meets Jacob C. Denton. Now, Jacob is a much better find. Okay. Uh, he is a recent widower. Uh, he has made millions mm-hmm. as a mining engineer. Ah. Um, in his life. He's now retired, but sitting pretty. He has got an absolute <laughs> fortune. Louise meets Jacob when she inquires about renting out his home. Mm-hmm. He has got a 14-bedroom mansion on Wiltshire Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, he is planning on going away for several months on some business. He said, well, I'll rent the house out. No, um, no, no, no. Get a bit of income going on. He is no, asking three hundred and fifty dollars a month for the for the house okay, while okay. he's away. For unknown reasons, he allows Louise to rent the mansion for seventy five dollars a month. <laughs> She's obviously quite <laughs> persuasive. She's quite persuasive. <laughs> How much would you give me for this mansion? You appear to have a tit out. Yes. And if about, I took out another... Yeah, what about his breasts? <laughs> his breasts. And if I lift my skirt... Okay, 75 pounds. Still, she didn't get it for free. She didn't get it for free. She didn't get it for free. She's a businesswoman. She's like, no, oh, please, she's for ne- tax purposes. She's negotiated well. <laughs> God. <laughs> now, I mean, the, the true nature of their relationship is somewhat unclear. She has been identified in various reports as a living girlfriend, as a housekeeper, as a simple tenant. Those were all the roles all, she played. Oh, yeah, all, all three in one. We, do, we don't really know. Yeah. Louise claim that they were romantically involved yeah um and that jacob was deeply in love with her jacob wasn't able to verify any of these <laughs> any of these situations <laughs> was was it because he was struck dumb with love uh, exactly he was yeah. so emotionally overawed by her beauty he could he no longer never speak. spoke again he took a vow of silence let's uh, and, and lived happily ever uh, after uh, in a monastery yeah a little over a week after louise moved into the match jacob disappeared when people inquired, Louis said, well, he's off on business. This business trip he was going to take, that's why he rented the mansion out. He was off on business. Okay, fine. He was talking about taking a business trip. Fine, we'll go with that. Not long after his sort of supposed departure, Louise hired a gardener to move several tons of dirt into the basement. <laughs> now, why I'm would you get a gardener I'm, to do that? <laughs> I'm going to grow mushrooms. Jacob loves mushrooms. We couldn't have had mushrooms as an ingredient? No, because there are no mushroom-based cocktails. But you love a mushroom. I do love a mushroom. You love a mushroom. We've had truffles. There's still no many, not many mushroom-based cocktails. And I, I bet, did investigate. Oh, did you? I did. Again, like the guacamole, would you not have loved a lovely little creamy mushroom on toast? <laughs> yeah, but me, me and Jacob, same boat. We love a mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> so she got a garden. So she's going like, to yeah. convert the basement into a mushroom farm. Right. That's the reason she says, absolutely. With soil? With, oh, yeah, loads, tons of soil. She's just piling it in down, down there she in the basement. She just rocks down there. <laughs> <laughs> but he, Jacob is going to be delighted when he gets back. 
Come he's gonna, on, he's, that's he's, so dark. He's going <laughs> so to have a grand dark. old time. Louise starts to forge Jacob's signatures to get access to his bank account <laughs> and his safety deposit boxes. When a bank official eventually starts querying these signatures, they don't look quite right, Louise tells an extraordinary story, and it is a truly extraordinary story. Okay. Jacob had apparently gotten into an argument with a mysterious but angry Spanish-looking woman. <laughs> this confrontation had resulted in Jacob being shot in the arm <laughs> by the Spanish-looking woman. The Spanish-looking woman. The Spanish-looking woman. We don't know if she's Spanish or not, but she looks Spanish. <laughs> she looked Spanish. She looked Spanish. She spoke Flemish. <laughs> <laughs> you know, passionate people. Oh, leaning into that stereotype, uh, aren't we? Oh, yes, she really was. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm yelling at her. Not you. I don't think you made this up. <laughs> So, All right, so she looked Spanish, she spoke German, and she walked Dutch. And she shot him in the arm. She shot Jacob in the oh, arm. Oh, just like a Russian. <laughs> As a result of this injury, his right arm has been amputated. What? He is now why? forced to use his left hand why? to sign his signatures. <laughs> That's brilliant. Which is why they're a bit wonky. They're a bit wibbly. He's had to use his left hand because the Spanish-looking woman shot him. He got chopped off. And we'll go... All right, then, yeah, fine. That seems entirely reasonable. I mean, after you've listened to all of that, you well, go, okay, right, i got lunch in five minutes. Yeah. Fuck it, I don't care. Just say, he's broken his arm. No, no, no. Now broken the, his arm. Now, mostly the bank manager is appalled by this story. My, my God, Jacob. We, no, we, God. we must go and pay a visit to Jacob. Make sure he's okay. This is a dreadful, dreadful thing. No, 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 no. You can't possibly go and see Jacob. He is not seeing anyone at the moment. He is so ashamed of his this injury and how it occurred with the mysterious Spanish looking woman that he, he cannot see anyone at the moment until he's come to terms with it himself he will then present himself back in public and receive okay. visitors <laughs> so so no and there you go the mysterious Spanish looking woman that does the rest of the story is good it feels like she ad-libbed that at the beginning and just put words in there she went there was a Spanish looking woman she shot him. Yep, shot him. Shot him. <laughs> shot him in the face. Yeah. No, no, in the arm. That's it. In the arm. <laughs> in the weeks that follow, now many of Jacob's friends, neighbours, distant relatives, they begin asking questions about, well, where is Jacob? He's been gone a long time now, and usually he he did go on business, but usually he would write. He, there would be some commu- <laughs> there would be some communication, but yes. what's going on? Louise always has a story ready to go. So sometimes it's just, well, he's obviously really, really busy. So he, he can't write. Other time, the Spanish-looking woman makes an appearance in the story. In another version, the Spanish woman had cut off Jacob's arm and leg with a sword. What? This time she had been a sword-wielding Spanish-looking woman who had removed his arms and his legs. In and the he middle was- of the city. That's yeah, and he, yeah, yeah. he was away being fitted with prosthetics. <laughs> And once he would return, everything would be fine. And he'll be back out in public, receiving visitors. All good. But at the moment, it's a very personal time. <laughs> it's difficult for him. Dealing with it. He needs space. And the manhunt for the sword-wielding <laughs> Spanish-looking woman must continue. Must continue. <laughs> <laughs> now, eventually... People are terrified. <laughs> People are like, fuck him. Who is this woman it's cutting just, off this limbs? mad woman running around LA with a sword-wielding <laughs> loon. I mean, in, 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 okay. in the meantime, Louise is having a great time. She's throwing all the parties at the mansion, <laughs> helping herself to his bank account. She drives his cars around town. She rents out the other rooms in the mansion mm-hmm. and pockets the cash. Eventually, Jake's lawyer starts to question things fucking eventually the attorney starts questioning louise not about jacob's disappearance but about the more business aspects of things where are the tenancy agreements of all these people that are renting out these rooms what bank account is their rent going into where is the the signed documents from jacob saying you have power of attorney and all this sort of stuff where Mm. where are all these documents it's like the lawyer's just woken up i've got them over there they're in the other room go and get them i promise (laughs) Is, is that her voice? That, that's how Louise sounds. That's how she spoke. Yeah. Okay, carry on in yeah, that voice, please. <laughs> Let's hear more from her. <laughs> <laughs> she quickly realises that these questions are going only going to lead to more and more and more and more questions that she really can't answer. Mm. So she legs it. Right. She <laughs> jumps out a window. She jumps out a window. She's got a bag that's called swag on it. And she, <laughs> she just, she legs it. And she also got another bag with lupins in it. <laughs> <laughs> Jacob's lawyer is now able to get into the house along with his daughter say he's had his daughter from his first marriage who's grown now she's now able to get into the house with the lawyer and go what the fuck's going on here all you random people get the fuck out of my house yes. they search the house and they find jacob's decomposing body buried in a wooden box in the basement oh 
inside. Not a mushroom in sight. Not a mushroom. <laughs> but, but he was growing but, a few yes, mushrooms. But a decomposing Jacob. Oh. An autopsy determines that he has been strangled and shot in the head. Strangled and shot? Strangled oh, and woman. shot. Double whammy. Double whammy. Time for a drink. Do you I think it drink? is. Let's have a I drink. Think we probably need a drink. Well, Nick, we have our drinks. Yes. What on earth is happening? Well, the police are on the hunt for Louise. Right. They need to track her down. Mm. They trace her back to Denver, where she is now living with her restrained husband, Richard Petey. She's oh, back there. She's back so there. shacked up. Take me in. Take, take me, me in. in. Yes, I love you, dear husband, dear daughter. What's your name again? Yes, I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> the police question her about Jacob's murder. And she is adamant that she's not involved. Nothing to do with me. Yeah. She claimed that it is the unidentified, mysterious Spanish looking woman. Of course. Um, it who is. has shot Jacob, causing his arm to be amputated. She was the killer. This theory is quickly dismissed as Jacob's body is found entirely intact. <laughs> there are no amputated arms anywhere. Or, so it's like, no, no, that didn't happen. No, really, no. Didn't, really didn't. Louise then claims that the body is not Jacob. It's not Jacob in there, but it's uh, Jacob's double. It's a double of Jacob who Jacob had killed in a clever li- attempt on life insurance fraud. She's... She's pulling out the twins card. Is she yeah, here? she's so pulling she out, right, pulling out the a, twins or some sort of very close resembling hobo that she had, that they have found. Yep. Jacob killed yep. him. Yep. Mm. They swapped faces just they beforehand. They swapped faces yeah. beforehand. Yeah. No one is entirely convinced by this. I'm not surprised. Um, and Louise has returned to LA to stand trial for first degree murder. I hope one police officer was taken in by it completely. <laughs> the first one who it's spoke to true, my God. <laughs> the first person who spoke to her walked out like, you'll never believe what's happened. Sorry. He's fired instantly. Louise's trial begins on the 21st of January, 1921. <gasps> Thousands of spectators line up daily to watch her Ooh, okay. walk into the courtroom. The newspapers and reporters flashing all over the place. The trial lasts just over two weeks. Okay. At the end, she is found guilty and sentenced to life imprisonment. <laughs> now, throughout the hearing and throughout the first years of her sentence, Louise's husband, um, Richard Petey, he remains steadfastly convinced that she is entirely innocent. Hmm. She could not have done such things. Yes, they didn't get on very well, but she's not a murderer. Aww. That's a crazy, crazy, crazy thought. You poor, simple man. She's, he's entirely convinced of her innocence. In twenty-three, so she's been incarcerated for two years now. Hmm. Louise tells Richard that divorce we need to get a divorce you need to continue with your life go and be happy go be happy with someone else richard agrees to the divorce but yeah. vows that he will wait forever i will wait oh. for you i will wait for my your release he's an idiot soon after the romantic. divorce is finalized louise stops replying to his letters refuses to see him yeah take the hit mate distraught over her rejection no Richard shoots himself. No, he doesn't. In an Arizona hotel room in 1924. That's genuine, yeah, isn't it? Yes. He commits suicide. God, he kills what, himself. What is this woman doing to people? I mean, I know she's murdering a lot of people. But but all of her he must all of her have loved her so much. She have must, killed themselves. What charm is she wielding on people? Yeah. Poor now, man. Yeah, absolutely. Also, and they've got a daughter together as well. She a bitch. She she a crazy bitch. So she's initially imprisoned at St. Quentin State Prison. Oh, nice. Um but then she's eventually transferred to the California Institution for Women. Lovely. It um, sounds like a prestigious place. It sounds place. like a very fancy place. Like yes, a, come in and get your like degree. A, sounds like a university or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> now we'll be studying <laughs> Not killing people. Yeah. Now, when she leaves San Quentin, the warden there, a, a chap called Clinton Duffy, he describes Louise okay. as projecting an air of innocent sweetness which masked oh. a heart of ice. Oh, I like that. Absolutely. That is such a fan. Someone tale, saw, isn't it? saw through her completely. Great. Now, at her new prison, she is considered a model prisoner. She works as a dental assistant at the prison. She helps maintain the flower gardens around the prison. She she writes for the prison newspaper. Entirely delightful. Mm. Though it is also reported that she likes to boast about the lovers that she had driven to their deaths. She's especially pleased with Richard's suicide, apparently. (gasps) Proof that even prison walls cannot contain her fatal charm. Wow. So (laughs) she's quite happy with that one. Even from the inside. I mean. In 1939, after okay. serving 18 years, did Louise... She, did she start the Second World War? <laughs> Probably, unlikely. With unlikely. her sexual charm. <laughs> yes. Her charm from beyond the walls started a war. Mm, she Isn't is, she quite Helen? Yes, she's paroled for good behaviour. 
and she is released into the custody of a Jesse Marcy. Now, Jesse, she's a woman who has lobbied for her release, never believing that Louise is guilty of such things. She has lobbied and is paid off. She is now free and in gratitude, Louise goes and begins working as her live-in housekeeper. Within two months, Jessie Marcy is dead. Jesus Christ! Louise then moves in with Emily Latham, acting as another housekeeper. Emily Latham dies within months of Louise's arrival. Neither death are investigated at all. The police are entirely unaware that Louise had been convicted of murder and is on parole. She's an innocent housekeeper with not ancient people but in their sort of i think they're sort of 50s 60s sort of people so not people who are at death's door no but as uh, we've said before <laughs> like they deserve to die yeah. they're, they're, they're how old they're over 60 dead, oh God, dead 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 old people die she literally had an axe yeah what in 1944 louise moves in with a with an elderly couple oh jesus um, and arthur c logan and his wife margaret now louise has struck up a friendship with with margaret um she had been a retired social worker mm. so they had met at the prison and again margaret was one of those who had lobbied for uh, louise's release believing mm. her to be entirely innocent and when louise was at, at a loose end her yeah. previous employees had died margaret was like come work here I need someone to help look after the house. This isn't suspicious at all. Arthur had just been diagnosed with dementia. So he was a bit of a handful uh, around the house. Margaret needs some help. Yeah. That Louise, perfect. It's also around this time that Louise marries for the fourth time. This time, the lucky man is a Lee Borden Judson. He is completely <laughs> unaware that his new bride had been previously imprisoned for murder. And was on parole. And, and both Louise and her new husband, Lee, move into the Logan's home mm -hmm. to work there. Before long, Louise begins telling neighbours that Arthur, he has fits of rage, does Arthur. On a couple of occasions, he's physically attacked Margaret, his wife, and mm. Louise. And has to be restrained down. The sort of the dementia is mm. getting so severe that he can't... He can't tell reality. Then on the 1st of June, 1944, Margaret Logan disappears. Oh, God. She's gone. Louise tells her confused husband, Arthur, that Margaret's gone into hospital. She's not very well. She can't have any visitors at the moment. She'll be back soon. Okay. Within a week, Arthur has been committed to Patton State Hospital by Louise, mm. who's claimed to be his foster sister. Oh, fuck you. Yep. And she has locked him away. This, this now, is just relentless. When neighbours begin asking about Margaret and Arthur's whereabouts, what's going on, Louise claims that Arthur had attacked his wife in this frenzy. Oh, she had around. been, yeah, yeah. she had built up this this story of Arthur's violence in the past, and apparently it has struck again in this frenzy. She, he had attacked his wife. He had bitten her on the nose so severely that she had been left disfigured. She was in hospital. She was undergoing. Uh, plastic surgery yeah, she big, was high yeah. she was hiding away until it was all cured arthur had to be committed had to for his own safety and safety of others he was now permanently in the hospital everyone went oh shit <laughs> <laughs> okay for the next six months louise and lee continue to live in the logan's home mm -hmm. as she had done with jacob louise begins spending logan's money forging checks access in their bank accounts oh. On the 6th of December, 1944, Arthur Logan dies while in hospital. Mm. Louise donates his body to science. Don't worry about a funeral or anything Jesus. like that. Just yeah, science. 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 You can deal with that. Shortly after Arthur's death, employees eventually at the Logan's Bank detect one of these sort of forged checks. And they go, really? It doesn't really look like Margaret's <laughs> signatures. Anymore. She's not very good at signatures. It's just a, it's just a big shaky X yeah. <laughs> with an uh, M in front of it. And they, they call the police. While they are investigating these forgery, the police search the Logan home mm. where Louise is still living. On the 20th of December 1944, six months after Margaret first disappeared, police discover her decomposing body <gasps> buried in a shallow grave underneath an avocado tree. An avocado back, tree! In the backyard. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't be celebrating that. Like, no. Oh no, someone's dead. Someone's, <laughs> someone's dead. Um, but an avocado tree! Oh, that's awful. <laughs> Only that's horrifying. a few hours after this discovery, Louise is arrested and charged with murder. Good! 
During questioning, Louise claims that Margaret was bludgeoned and shot by her husband, Arthur, during one of his homicidal frenzies. Of course. It was entirely yeah, Arthur. She had buried Margaret by, underneath the avocado tree because she was so concerned that because of her record, because of her past, everyone would assume that it was her. And they would be right. Mm, and they probably would be right. Mm. Lee Judson, her fourth husband, was also arrested and charged with murder, mm. thinking he was an accomplice in the crime. That was eventually dropped due to insufficient evidence. There's no evidence that he knew anything about mm. what his wife was doing, his wife's yeah, yeah. past she behavior. She seems to have operated completely independently. Yeah. The day after he was released, he jumps to his death from no. the floor of the ninth floor spring office building. What is going in on? LA. What I can't, I can't. This I can't get my head round. What husbands. is she doing? Have all apparently all killed di- themselves. Well, I, yeah, I mean, some she's clearly killed. Yeah. Is there any implication that she's shoved him or? No. Is... Well, she's no. She's in custody. She's in custody. Uh, she's in custody at this point. Did they kill it? What the? Yeah. What the what? So at least at least two have killed themselves under the, completely of their own vol- volition because either she's been in prison or yes. she's been in custody. Yes. Two of them are very questionable. So two of them she killed, but, well have... but two of them have killed themselves over her. Over her, absolutely. Oh, that is some level of toxicity of no. just mental conditioning of you can't live without me. Oh, God, that's dark. That's dark. Louise's third murder trial begins in LA on the 23rd of April, 1945. Mm-hmm. A jury find Louise guilty of first-degree murder and sentence her this time to death. In the years following her conviction, Louise continues to maintain her innocence and after several failed appeals, she is executed in the gas chamber at St. Quentin State Prison April 11th, 1947. Wow. And that's a terrifying story <laughs> of Louise Petey. Christ. <laughs> Who, how have we not come across her before? What, the, what has gone on there? <laughs> that's mad. Absolutely I mean, mad. That has been a while since we've had a modern bona fide psychopath. Yeah. Just the lack of empathy all the way through Completely. that, again, like does not care. Everyone is expendable. Mm. Everyone is a means to an end. Everything you can steal, everyone can you could just throw away. Oh my god! There's nothing <laughs> redeeming about her at really all. Really not. Absolutely There's points not. in the story where you kind of go like, "Oh, if you're going to go for it, go for it," or everything like that. You know, with the stealing, I was thinking, but shit, but I, I'm so flabbergasted by the husbands. Yeah, as well. And Absolutely. yeah, I can only assume that is a level of. And I'm not going to go into it, but that is a dark relationship. But that has been the end result. I don't think we've come across that sort of no. Thing say, before. say de- de- definitely two who have committed them, committed suicide of their own, apparently of their own. Well, did they know? After. Is it guilt? Is that, that I suppose people probably ask that. Is it? Do they feel guilty having supported her, or has she whispered something to? Them? I don't know. I don't know. And say that the the first two it's questionable whether she actually had killed them henry and harry mm. the the first two did she kill them did she Ooh. kill them or did they commit suicide we do we don't know good lord on those ones but yeah it is a terrifying just racking up the things like again like her first conviction you're a model citizen in prison who cares mm. who cares like she doesn't give she's not repented at all She's clearly working the system of like I'll be good, yeah. and you can be you can be very good at gardening, you can be very good at laundry, you can be very good at sewing while still going. You know how many people have killed because they love me. <laughs> That's pause for thought. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, she did go through a number of paroles before she got out. It worked. So yeah, it worked. I think it was on her eighth or ninth sort of parole yeah, the hearing. When she went like, okay, she, right, I've had eight goes. There she got out. Now I know what to say. And then just yeah. went straight out and started killing people. Straight out and killing people again. Go for the elderly. Yeah, I mean, so obviously she was convicted for the kid, for Margaret's death. Yeah. Whether she killed the two before or whether they were natural causes, again, is questionable. Is Help up in them the on their way. Help them on their way, we don't know. Yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely two. <laughs> Potentially another six. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, that is crazy. Nice to have something that's sort of creeping into the modern era, but not quite. But not, not quite. quite. We spanned a few decades there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what do you think, people? What do you think of the story of Louise Petey? Definitely a serial killer. Convicted of two. May have been a much bigger serial yeah. killer. What do you think of the story? Do you think she was guilty of all of the crimes that have been laid at her door? Do you think she was just a victim of circumstance, a a small petty thief, and people just died as she passed by them? (laughs) 
What do you think of the husbands? What do you think yeah. of what happened to them? Is Four it husbands, that's coincidence? Going. What do you say to someone? Make them jump out of a window. And how many diamonds would you wear on an outfit <laughs> to look bougie but not too bougie? Not too bougie. <laughs> not too bougie, bougie. But not too bougie. Oh, bougie is fine. Tell us what you think. Jump on the comments of this episode wherever you listen to it. Tell us your thoughts, your theories, your feelings. Share your views on social media. But most importantly, while you are musing, you must mix up a revolver. A revolver. Now, if you have some strong coffee liqueur... Some decent coffee liqueur. I don't think that was bad coffee liqueur. Meh. It was just on the sweet side. So this is a lesson to get the good coffee liqueur. Kahlua is quite sweet. Kahlua is quite sweet. But it's still darker and thicker and it's maybe would have worked more better. It's coffee yeah, and Tia Maria, maybe, if you have that. So you'll have it in the cupboard, yeah. probably. Or if you really want to go all out to impress your coffee drinking friends, <laughs> get some of the, the special really kind of coffee forward coffee liqueurs that are a bit more bitter and yeah. lower on the sugar. And experiment. Okay, have yeah, some absolutely. fun. Yeah. Because it's just bourbon and coffee and yeah. a little bit of bitter. I need to get some more, more coffee. We went through a phase of just... Yeah. Knocking that back with some espresso martinis. Yeah, mm. if you, I mean, buy it. You can have this and then espresso martinis. True, true. Always goes down a treat. Remember to send us pictures of whatever cocktails you are enjoying, wherever you are in the world. Also, bars that you're visiting and interesting menus that you see. If you are on Instagram, tag us in stories because that means we can reshare them and show people what's going on. And, and tag the businesses also as well so we can give them some love too. If and you, cake recipes. I want cake. more cake. Nick needs cake. More cake recipes, please. What, Nick, Recipes that Nick can make. So now you're staying with dear Emma for yes. a little while before oh, you move my, into the place. All my cakey stuff is in storage now. You can make stuff at Emma's. I've got cakey stuff I can lend you. Maybe. So, okay, we need some simple, easy cake recipes that will satiate Nick. Yeah. And also big fancy cakes that he can big start working cakes. on. Proper Mainly recipes. full of booze. And ghosts. And ghosts. <laughs> and ghosts. Entirely hollow, full of ghosts and booze. And Lego. Yeah, and Lego. If you haven't already, please consider joining us on Patreon for extra episodes every single week, as well as more bonus content throughout the month. And please leave us a review on Apple iTunes if you haven't already. Thanks for listening, guys. We have been the people inside the Poisoner's Cabinet. We will see you next week. And remember, your loved ones are trying to kill you.